Now, when we say an object is in translational equilibrium, ah, let's write that down, translational equilibrium, then basically, all the forces acting on that object negate each other, and the object doesn't really move anywhere. And so, how do we analyze objects that are in translational equilibrium? So let's look at an example, okay, again, of, a, of an object over here resting on a rough slope. Okay, and uh, let's give this angle over here, theta, the, the incline. Okay, now we, first of all, when we analyze objects in translational equilibrium, it's very important to first draw a free body diagram. So in this case, okay, uh, I actually like to draw free body diagrams like this. Okay, so I will indicate this object with a little cross. So now I know there's the weight, so let's put the weight here, FW. We know that there's a normal acting like this. F normal, and there has to be a friction that acts something like that. Okay, now the next step is very important. Okay, I've got to resolve all my forces into x and y components. Okay, so resolve all forces okay, into x and y. Okay, so how that will happen? Okay, this is my x axis, this is my y axis. Now, because I know the angle of the incline over here as theta, this theta, of course, will make its way up there. Okay, and it will also make its way here by trigonometry. So we can now split the friction and the normal. So this would be F cosine theta. This will be F sine theta. This over here will be, of course, Fn cosine theta, and this will be Fn sine theta. Okay, and now if you are in translational equilibrium, then the summation of all the horizontal forces must be zero, and the summation of all the vertical forces must be zero. So in other words, okay, once I've resolved them, we don't have to consider these two anymore. I can now say that F cosine theta must be equal in magnitude to fn sine theta. Okay, so that's basically me working out what's happening with the horizontal forces. And now, with the vertical forces, we can say fn cosine theta plus f sine theta must equal to the weight. And there you have it, right? Once you have these equations, usually you'll have enough uh, values to substitute in and to solve for the unknowns. And this is how we systematically study objects that are in translational equilibrium.